Hey guys, today we are making a scarecrow gnome. Let's jump into it. The few basic things that you will need is a pair of socks from the Dollar Tree, some lentils, I got those from the Dollar Tree as well, some polyfill or other um, soft filling. We'll start by putting the lentils into the sock first. And this will be a heavy base for our gnome so that he will stand up well. And then you will follow that by the soft filling. I like the lentils because they're so small and it makes the um, body of the gnome less lumpy the smaller your filler is. I've used pinto beans before on the last gnome I made and it made for a pretty lumpy body. You should go ahead and do yourself a favor and double up the socks to begin with because we will be putting this down inside the other sock because one sock is sort of see-through, but when you double them up, it definitely looks better. We will be giving the gnome a shirt, so it's up to you whether it bothers you that you can see the lentils on the bottom of the gnome. You can sort of mold or shape the gnome to however um, shape you like, how tall you want it, um, how wide, you know, do you want your gnome to be a little chunkier or a little taller and slender? It's completely up to you. You can use whatever you'd like for the beard, um, some faux fur, but I thought because this is going to be a scarecrow that it would be good to use this raffia, which will resemble straw. And um, I wasn't crazy about the color of the raffia on this luau skirt from the Dollar Tree. It was a little too light, a little too bleached looking. So I'm just taking some watered down paint and um, I'm just going to create a dye for the, for the raffia to give it a darker look. When I put the raffia in the water, it seemed to be dyeing it very well, but it turned out once I laid this out and let it dry for a while, um, it really didn't darken it that much. So I would definitely either use a little more paint next time or a little less water but I ended up look liking how it turned out.
Now for the shirt of our Scarecrow Gnome, I just have this old flannel shirt here. It has stains on it and some holes. So it was perfect for this craft. I'm just going to cut out a rectangle out of the shirt wide enough to go around our gnome body. I'm making sure to put the seam that is on the sock on the back of the body. So the shirt opening will be on the front. Most of this gnome is going to be covered up by his hat and his large beard. So you don't have to worry about being too perfect. I contemplated whether I wanted his shirt to wrap around his entire body, including the bottom. But I decided to leave the bottom, just the sock, just this tan to sort of resemble um, maybe some old khaki pants or something that the scarecrow is wearing. And I thought that instead of a belt to go, um, you know, in between where the sock stops and the shirt begins, I thought that a cute belt would just be some twine. Some of the Dollar Tree uh, leather, faux leather ribbon would work really well as a belt as well. I've just never been able to find any at my store. To finish off the belt, I decided to take a short piece of the twine and tie a simple knot to make it look like this is where his belt is tied off.
Now for the hat, I made myself a paper cone out of some cardstock just to give me sort of a template to go by for how large or small I needed the cone to be to fit on my gnome. So you'll just kind of create a cone that fits on the head of your gnome. This is going to be a very imperfect floppy hat, so don't worry about it being perfect. Uh, the whole idea of a scarecrow is that it's something that a farmer throws together. So really, the more imperfect it is, the cuter it is. The fabric that I'm using is just an old drop cloth for painting that I got from Home Depot. When you're gluing your hat, you're going to want to leave the very tip top of the hat open just a little bit because later we'll be gluing some straw down inside of the top of the hat. To make the brim of your hat, you'll just be cutting out a circle a little larger than the base of your cone.
you can see that dyeing the raffia the way I did it barely even made a difference. But I did end up liking the dirtier looking raffia compared to the clean um, raffia that I didn't dye. Now you could make things really easy for yourself by just using the luau skirt while it's um, still strung up on this twine and you could just glue down as many layers of the skirt as you think looks good. But what I'm going to do is just take this um, raffia that I dyed that I made look dirty and um, I'm just going to glue down each individual strand onto my gnome. You could um, lift up the beard and put some of your scraps up underneath the main um, portion of the beard just to give it some more body. I'm going to be using a wood bead that I have for the nose and it has a hole on just one side. So it would be good if you could find some wooden beads that either don't have a hole in it or only have a hole on one side so that you can't see the hole. Um, I believe the ones that only have one hole might be called dowel caps. I decided that I wanted the hat to be flopping over just a little bit, and so I just took a dot of glue and um, glued down the hat to where it stayed down. And now I'm just taking some raffia scraps and we're going to glue them into the tip of our hat.
Now we're going to make a patch to go on the hat just as a detail item. And I'm going to make it out of the same fabric as the shirt. To go around the seam of our hat to make it look a little bit better and to add more detail, I'm just going to take some twine and glue it all the way around the seam. To add some stitching detail onto the patch that's on our hat, I'm just taking a small piece of twine and I'm cutting little um, pieces of it and I'm gonna glue each one on to resemble stitching. I wanted to add one more um, decorative element onto the hat and I decided just to cut a smaller leaf out of a larger faux leaf and glue it onto the brim of his hat. You can find um, these faux leaves at Dollar Tree. Now you could leave your gnome just like this without arms but I decided to add some arms. You're just going to cut out two rectangles, the length that you want each arm, and you're going to glue the sides together to create a tube. I'm going to round the top of one end um, because that's where the shoulder will be. Then we will glue the rounded end closed and fill the sleeve with the polyfill. I'm just going to hot glue each arm on at the shoulder, tucking it up underneath the hat a little bit. Now at the end of the sleeves, we're definitely going to want some raffia poking out to give it that scarecrow look. I'm just gluing small pieces of raffia folded in half to the inside of each sleeve. I thought that I might want to use some wood beads as hands. That is often done with gnomes, but I felt like 
the raffia sticking out as straw looks better than him having hands. We're gonna make our gnome holding a pumpkin that I got from Dollar Tree. This actually came off of a floral pick from Dollar Tree. And because it's made of foam, I was worried about the foam melting by using hot glue. So I'm just using this super glue that I got from Dollar Tree. I love how he turned out and I can't wait to put him on display this fall. I wanted to show you this quick tip. By taking a stick from your yard and just sticking it into the center of these um, balls of twine, it creates a pumpkin. Thank you so much for stopping by today and watching this video. If you liked it, please give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed yet, I would love it if you would because that will help this channel out a whole lot. Thanks for watching and I hope you have a great day.